My name is Ritesh and I work at Southwest Washington Medical Center as a respiratory therapist. And I've learned a lot. You learn on the job from, and from your fellow co-workers because you learn from experience. And you gotta be very good at critical thinking to do this job. Like, what what I'm gonna do next to make it better? You gotta actually look at the patient and they decide, oh, he's not breathing. Why is he not breathing? What about now? You feel like you got something down there? Mm -hmm. That's a seven and a half tube. It's twenty three at the left. I start my shift by you know coming in for a shift change report. Um, no changes on her, she's on spontaneous. Basically, it's a 12-hour shift. So, you get your report from your previous therapist and they tell you what happened during the day, you know, who gets what kind of treatment, and what are the doctor's orders, you know, and then you write it down, and then you take over from there. And during the night, you do your therapy, you do your treatments, and whatever the doctor has ordered, tomorrow morning, when the shift ends, okay. that's when you give the report back to, a, to the other therapist who is relieving you, like basically what you've done and what the doctor wants to be done. This hospital has uh, three critical care areas, the uh, emergency department, intensive care unit, and uh, cardiac care unit. So tonight I'm working in cardiac care unit and part of an intensive care unit. This is uh, what we call a vent or ventilator. And basically this machine is breathing for the patient. All the breaths are timed and our goal is to keep it above 95. We can have an artificial air, airway inside the patient. One is through a, a trachea, it's called a tracheostomy. And the other one that goes through the mouth, which is called uh, oral intubation. So this is usually reserved for the patients that are on the vents for a long time. Take a deep breath, go. Well, in this case, this patient had a trach, so you've got to make sure the trach is open. There's nothing clogging it, you know. If it is, then you suction it. Before you do the suctioning procedure, you've got to make sure the patient has 100% of uh, oxygen for at least two minutes. When you suction patients, their oxygen saturation goes down. And in that way, you're preparing for it before it happens. I got a lot out, dude. A lot of people are grossed out about this mucus thing. I mean, it's just another body's secretions, you know. I mean, I was grossed out, frankly, <laughs> when I came out of college and started working here. And then it's a matter of getting used to it. Right now, ICU is full. You know, they can't take any more patients. So this is kind of like a backflow area. I'm preparing for the patient to arrive, you know. It's, it's, it's always better to be prepared than when the patient comes and you are scrambling for stuff that the patient needs. You always want to have your suction ready because you never know when the patient's going to vomit or obstruct his uh, airways, you know. So it's always a good thing. You never know when you're going to need it. The most challenging part of this field is doing critical care. And then I'm going to put the air into it, okay? Mm -hmm. Critical care is uh, those patients that are ventilator dependent and we doing the breathing for them. You know, we're controlling the heart, we're controlling the blood pressure. Anybody can come out of school and go on the floor and give breathing treatments. It takes a lot of courage a lot of determination and a lot of knowledge of critical care to be in the ICU or CCU taking care of somebody's airway on a ventilator. Anything can go wrong at any moment. And your decision makes a lot of difference. In order to make changes on a patient's uh, ventilator or BiPAP machine, we have to take an arterial blood sample and we bring it down here to the lab to, to run the test on it and the test will tell us how the patient is breathing. And looking at the test results, we make changes on the band or the bypass. CO2 of 39, so that's... You always want to communicate with your healthcare team. If you get a critical results, you always want to show it to somebody else. 
like in case the nurse. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get on. Oh, you call the doctor. You, yeah. This this job is all about teamwork. You, know? you just can't do everything alone. You know? I mean, if anybody comes and says, hey, this is one man army, he's lying. Look at now, there's like three or four people in ICU alone trying to make everything work, you know. So, and I, I work with okay. a lot of nice people, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you need something, yeah. let us know. <laughs> All right. If it wasn't for these two, and obviously this lady, I'd quit this profession a long time ago. They had me, you know, they are team player, true team players, you know. Help a lot, you know, always to really to give the two cents and take the two cents from me. The other thing about being a, any healthcare worker, we have to actually chart everything we do. Like the suctioning I did, the medications I gave, I gotta record everything in there. The heart rate, the respiratory rate, the amount of secretions I got from the suctioning, the color of the secretions, you know, everything is computer charted. So the physicians have uh, access to it. Every time you give a patient a medication, you got to scan them. You scan the patient's wristband, then you scan the medication. They will tell you you're giving the medication to the right patient. And then it will show up in the computer. And then you chart. Once a patient is on a ventilator, this vent is calibrated for the patient's use. And once the patient is extubated, you know, the vent needs to be cleaned and set up with extra supplies. At the same time, we do a small maintenance on it to check if everything is working, like there's no leak in the pressure and the filters are working and the tubing has no leaks and it's working. And basically everything in the vent supposed to do is do it. The doctor wrote to do some vent setting changes. Basically give him a, a trial. Right now the patient is tolerating the settings change. Uh, he seems to initiate his own breaths. His heart rate seems to be okay and uh, respiratory rate is below 20. So that's the, the third time we did a vent change settings on the patient. So, as a therapist, you end up doing that a lot, you know, just to do a trial setting change, trial setting change, and finally, if the patient tolerates that setting change, we put him on that. So it's a trial and error. Okay. Uh, he didn't come for any respiratory distress. He's going home today. Uh, it's time for my shift change report to tell my fellow oncoming uh, colleagues the status of the patients, where they're standing, and what's going to happen during the day. Basically, tell them what we did last night, and if there was any new orders written, what the doctor wants. And she looks like she's awake, but she's not actually. I mean, she won't talk or anything, but she can move. We cover the whole hospital. Running around, taking care of patients. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty exhausted. But at the end of your shift, you are like happy. Hey, I did something good today. How's your breathing? You feeling okay? No shortness of breath? No? Hey, I saved somebody's life. And it's the biggest achievement you can uh, get from your work. <laughs>